Last week I played 104 Trials matches on Burnout, and every one of those matches was solo queuing. That's normally how I play Trials these days, just me, by myself, trying out some builds and weapon combos to see how they fare, but obviously along the way I'm trying to go flawless and then farm Adept rolls after that. And during my streams this weekend I had several people ask for tips for playing Trials solo, so I went ahead and compiled a list of advice for folks who want to more consistently get to the lighthouse while solo queuing. And for the record, about a third of my matches were on PC, on mouse and keyboard, so big shout out to those of you who tuned into that stream, because honestly it was really fun seeing the PC meta side of things too. I thought both console and PC had their pros and cons, PC being uh, mostly like in favor of Void Titans with overshield barricades on every corner with SMGs with Peacekeepers, and console being mostly Hunters with 6th Coyote, who refused to use weapons and instead put down two Spectres and a Threadling Grenade and just trust the Bug army to do the work. I'm obviously being a bit reductive, but those are, I think, the most popular choices in the platforms respectively. But let's get into some tips for getting you some wins as a solo player. One of the biggest parts of winning Trials matches solo and where I want to start today is all about being a good teammate. And note that I didn't say getting good teammates, right? It's super easy to complain about the performance of other players on your team, trust me. <laughs> Sometimes I'm scratching my head and yelling at the screen when I get two kills and get the third guy weak and then I go down and all the other two have to do is shoot the last guy once and then I see them going around on some super long flank around the outside of the map that takes them through Brazil, then Madagascar, Indonesia, a little stop at Fiji before they get to the middle of the map where the action went down, and by that time, they've chained all their reses and posted up on the cap point with barricades, and my teammates just get slaughtered. So all that to say, I get it. Sometimes you get duds, but you can absolutely play around duds, and sometimes you're going to have to. And that all comes down to being a good teammate consistently. Let me give you some practical examples. The biggest part of winning solo trials matches is learning prioritization. Sometimes the thing you're doing or focusing on is not in fact the most important thing in the moment. You're going to need to be willing to pivot and react in real time to what the current biggest priority is. And at the beginning of the round, the priority is obviously securing the first kill. Here's a round where I go inside. I see one guy goes past the far end and up towards the bridge. Then there's one opponent at the end of the long haul sniping at me. We exchange shots, but then I hear gunfire on my left. So that immediately tells me that my teammates are in an isolated 2v1 against a lone opponent outside. The obvious most important thing here is not for me to continue my snipe battle. It's not for me to move further into the map and take on the guy who went to bridge. The obvious thing to do is immediately disengage and beeline it outside to collapse on the solo player. Find the guy that's alone or separated from the pack and pinch him. It's an easy 3v1, we get the kill, and now we have the advantage in the round. My teammates barely did any damage at all to this guy. They, in fact, went on to both die in this round without doing anything instrumental. But what they did do just by being present was give me an anvil to crash my hammer against. They stood there in spawn and allowed me to squeeze the isolated opponent against them and not allow him a way out. Let's keep chatting about prioritization. Let me give you another scenario that comes up very often. Let's say your team gets two kills close together. So now we have two enemy bodies to control, but one of our teammates went down somewhere else on the map. So now we are in a 2v1, right, against the last remaining enemy, and we have control of two enemy bodies. I see this happen all the time, where my teammate will leave the 2v1, leave the two enemy bodies, and go for the revive on our third teammate. Do not do this, okay? Don't do that. That revive is not the priority here. The priority is to control the bodies that we have and play our numbers advantage. The priority is to win the 2v1. What often happens in this scenario is the one teammate leaves for the revive and leaves me in a 1v1 with two enemy bodies. And without another teammate there to help me manage it, a lot of times the one enemy will run up and throw a barricade down on one of the bodies and get the revive. Now they both have overshields. I can't bang that uh, shield down quickly enough by myself. Don't have enough firepower to do it now because I'm alone. 
Now they both have over shields and I'm in a 1v2. So by the time my teammate gets back with the guy that he went to revive, I'm dead. They're left in a 2v3. The advantage has swung the other way and we lose the round. It's all about understanding the priority in the moment. When you have the numbers advantage, don't give that advantage away. You lean on it. Let's continue talking about prioritization. Let's say we have one body to control. We are in a 3v2. The other two bad guys are in the middle of the map. We control the outside of the map with one body. The priority here is to play each other's angles and team fire. Someone will peek, they always peek. Our job is to make sure that when they do peek, we can have at least two of us shoot our primary weapons at the guy that peeks at the same time because the TTK drops to basically under half a second when we do that. The priority here is not a flanking maneuver. A lot of times a player in this situation, in the 3v2, will fan out and go on a flanking route, leaving us in a 2v2 for several seconds, and anything can happen in that time. Oftentimes, by the time you finish your flanking maneuver and get set up on a new angle, they've already pushed out, maybe they've gotten a kill, revived their fallen teammate, and you end up losing the round. Advantage swings can happen fast in trials, and there's definitely a time for flanking. It's usually when the enemy team has the advantage of controlling the room with the capture point and time is running out. But otherwise, always, always, always play the advantage that you have instead of trying to create a new advantage. Capitalize on the one that you've got. The last thing regarding prioritization that I want to mention is an end of game scenario that will save you a loss if you're mindful of it, okay? If your enemy has won four rounds and they just need one more round to win the game, be mindful of their supers. If the enemy team at the beginning of the round has a well of radiance or a bubble cooled down, then your priority is to get to the capture zone first. Don't go anywhere else. Don't do anything else unless specifically you have a Nova Bomb or a Blade Barrage cooled down. Otherwise, this is a foot race. If they get there first, that super is going down on the zone and you just have to watch them win. So when the round starts, you're going to want to get there first and team fire the Titan or Warlock down on their approach to the zone. Think of it like Lord of the Rings. The Urukai is on the approach to blow the wall in Helm's Deep. Be better than Legolas, and don't be an Aragorn just expecting your teammate to do all the work. At least throw a rock or something at the guy. Okay, let's stay on the topic of capturing the zone. Let's say that your team has the advantage of owning the room where cap point is, okay? This is a similar idea to standard control game modes, right? Oftentimes, the best strategy to get that thing captured is to have one person capturing the zone and everyone else run interference. In Trials, it doesn't cap faster with multiple people on it. So instead of all of you standing in the open on the zone just waiting for a grenade or a cloud strike shot or a super to mess you all up, instead, leave one guy in the zone. The others of you, fan out. Or whoever is left alive, move forward. Try to control the choke points leading into the room. You don't even have to kill anyone. All you gotta do is keep the enemies away from the zone. So use grenades on the doors, use barricades, don't let them have a free approach to the zone. They're gonna be reckless, they're gonna feel the pressure to push to get to the zone, so you wanna capitalize on that and free your teammate up to get that capture done without interference. All right, let's move on to some more generic tips that are sort of fundamental to solo play. So first generic tip, bring a build. You want to step into the arena with a cohesive build that has a game plan or a gameplay loop of some kind. It doesn't even have to be complex or fancy, you just need to have a plan. A bad plan is always better than having no plan at all. I did a number of builds this week, some worked better than others, but it's always good to have at least a planned sequence of events. If this, then this. For example, if I get the first kill with the cryosthesia, then I can freeze the next opponent, and switch to the sniper rifle and shatter them with one shot, which synergizes with the artifact mods this season for bigger shatter radius and bigger damage to automatically eliminate the final player. Boom! Plan made, plan executed, round one. So always bring a build. Generic tip number two, always leave yourself an exit. 
You need to have an immediate extraction plan if things go poorly, and sometimes that's as simple as playing really close to cover. So that if instead of one enemy peeking the corner, it ends up being two of them, you can quickly duck back into safety for a moment. I've seen so many teammates stand too far into the open to exchange shots only to get themselves into a 1v2 with not enough time to make it back to cover. Always give yourself a way out. Be mindful of your positioning. Don't put your back against a wall or into a corner. You're going to get hosed every time. Sometimes the difference between winning and losing is simply picking a different angle to engage from, so allow yourself that option. Generic tip number three, cover the bodies. One of the simplest mistakes people make is not paying enough attention to the bodies of enemies and allowing revives for the other team. It is on you to know where the bodies are, and that especially goes for those of you who did not get the kill. When you hear the audio cues, and you see the kill feed, and you see that one of your teammates got a kill, you need to look at where that teammate is on the map immediately to know roughly where that body is so you can make sure you don't give that body up. Check the kill feed. If it says your teammate melee killed them, then you know exactly where the body is. If it's a sniper kill, then consider the lane that they must have been watching based on their location. You need to piece together the information that's being given to you to paint an accurate picture of the battlefield in real time. These are things that only come with intentionality and practice. You have to be intentional about considering all the information that the game gives you and interpreting it. All this to say, you need to know where the bodies are and make sure you don't give them up for free. Generic tip number four is connected to the third. When your teammate gets a kill, you drop what you are doing immediately and you go to them. Right? Unless you have a guy in the open, dead to rights, you need to disengage and go to your teammate. Regroup immediately on kills. It's all about getting the advantage and then leaning on that advantage. For all you know, your teammate won that battle but is very weak and in need of immediate cover fire to keep the other opponents from moving up on them. So you drop your flank, you drop your duel, whatever it is that you've got going on, and you go to them. And finally, the last and fifth generic tip for solo play Find the guy that's alone. People love to be renegades and cowboys. They love to go off on their own and try to find a heroic moment to do something cool. So you as a team need to try to find the guy that separates and move to him. Play the numbers game at all times. Isolate and eliminate. And then start the process of controlling the body like we've been talking about. That's the ticket to winning trials rounds most of the time. It's about getting that first pick and moving to control it easiest way to do that is to find the guy that went alone and pick on him. Alrighty, there you have it. Those are my tips and my advice for how to win trials matches while solo queuing. Spend less time worrying about getting good teammates and spend more time considering how you can be a good teammate. One person making the right decisions at the right times is often all it takes to swing the balance of a match in your favor. I hope you found this video helpful and informative. If you did, Feel free to leave a like on the video and comment any tips you think I may have left out. As always, consider subscribing for additional Destiny content. Be warm and well fed my friends, and I hope to catch you in the Crucible. Fine.